All right, hello everyone. This is Rod Stallmuller and this is another Aviatrix Tech Talk Tuesday. Uh, we've got a real good uh, show for you today. Shazad Ali, who's one of our principal solution architects who uh, actually works a lot with customers in the field and recently has been working with a lot of customers who are doing adoption, uh, moving Aviatrix networking into Google Cloud Platform. And, and he's gonna go over a lot of the ways that we're eliminating barriers for doing that and then how you bring that together in a multi-cloud network architecture. I wanna mention also that Nicholas De La Croix is gonna be on line with us, another principal solution architect for, for us. And he'll be uh, actually answering questions along the way. So if you have any questions during the presentation, put them in the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen there. Don't use the chat, use the Q&A box and we'll answer questions as we go along. And at the end of the presentation, maybe we'll have time to uh, answer some of those questions to the entire group. Uh, but with that, I'd like to introduce Shazad and take it away, Shazad. All right, thanks a lot, Rod. All right, guys, uh, thanks again for joining. So yeah, so I've been working with a lot of customers uh, who are adopting GCP these days. And uh, when I talk to these customers, I see a common theme out there. Uh, the barriers or the hurdles that they're running into, I can easily categorize them into three big buckets here. So if I'm the enterprise, the first challenge I will see is in the build category. So if I start building, or start putting my workloads, my applications into GCP, the first challenge is that I don't see any standard architecture there. Things are all over the place. So in the process, I have seen customers, they have put together their workload or created some topologies out there, but it's one way of doing it in one region, second way of doing it in the other region. When it comes to security, there is no a cohesive way or a standard way to provide security across the board. When it comes to actually connecting those applications inside the cloud, it's, uh, it's not again a, a seamless job. Uh, you need to manually create the route table, the security group, you need to make sure you provide connectivity inside the cloud. And when it goes across the cloud, it becomes even more challenging. Okay, so as an enterprise, let's say I figured this thing out, but how would I provide the network correctness? There is no body or entity sitting on top of my build that can provide this traffic engineering, the correctness, making sure that all routes are programmed and propagated properly, and I don't have any black holes or things of that nature, right? The second thing as an enterprise I will notice is in the advanced networking category. Yeah, I have these constructs there. I have the, the logical router, the security groups, but I need more than that. I need advanced networking. I need a simplified connectivity from my on-prem to my remote data center, to my branches, or my users who are logging into the cloud. I need to provide them the enterprise grade security control and connectivity options. Encryption is very important. I cannot take it light. I have to make sure that as an infra admin or the owner, I am providing the encryption. I cannot be dependent on the application owners to provide or encrypt the traffic or, or provide the, 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 the compliance and the guardrails that I need. I also need to make sure that when I'm sending the traffic out or bringing the traffic in from the internet, I'm providing the egress security properly so that my workloads are not compromised. Oftentimes in the advanced networking category, you will notice that customers, they have this overlapping IP requirement because the reality is that there are mergers, acquisitions are happening and these companies or other organizations or partners can bring their own IP. So I must provide advanced source netting, denetting for, for those type of overlapping IP use cases. And then the traffic engineering is very important for me because I want to make sure that I'm receiving that traffic from the on-prem and then sending it to another cloud maybe, but if the cloud connectivity goes down, I still need to make sure my traffic is reaching to the other side, maybe using the on-prem route that I have. So I need to make sure that ASPath prepend, advanced BGP knobs, all those routing options are there. And then the last piece here 
is the about the operations. Okay, I have built something. I provided the advanced networking, but at the end of the day, I need to run this show. I need to make sure this thing is properly monitored. There are uh, observability, uh, observations in there, the monitoring in there, the automation is in there. So this is what I need for this cloud network, or if I have multiple deployments, I need to provide that. And in the process, obviously, I cannot retrain all my employees to learn all these clouds, right? So I need to make sure that the tools that I used in the on-prem world, for example, ping, trace route, or packet capture, those things are available in the cloud as well. So these are the three main areas I see when it comes to cloud or GCP adoption. So how do we solve this or how do we eliminate these barriers? So our answer is to follow the architecture approach. And this is what we have given to the industry that when it comes to building your network in the cloud, you need to follow the proper architecture because the reality is that you were using a, an architecture in your van or in your data center, could be spine leaf type architecture, could be three tier architecture with access, aggregation and core. You need to follow the same mentality here. And this is the architecture that we propose. So in the bottom, you see the cloud access layer. This is where your on-prem resources, your branches, your data centers are connecting into the cloud. In the middle, you see the cloud network layer. This will become the foundation for your cloud infrastructure because here you need to provide a robust cloud and multi-cloud transit that will become your core foundation. This is where you will have your VPCs, your VNets and workloads connected. This is going to provide you the advanced networking functionalities in the routing service insertion or security space. And then on the left-hand side, you see security and the right you have operations. So these are the pillars that should cut across all these layers because it's extremely important that the network that you're building is secure from all angles and then you can manage and operate it. So with that architecture, now you can provide the advanced networking, the security, the operational services or the service insertion could be uh, F5 or Palo Alto or Checkpoint doesn't really matter. This is where everything is connected. And that's why we call it a unified common and a standard architecture that is applicable for one single cloud in one single region or multiple regions, multiple cloud. So once you build this, this is pervasive, it stays everywhere. Okay, so now how do I actually make sure or enable this architecture? So this is where we have the Aviatrix platform. There are three main components as part of our platform. Number one is the controller. Then we have the gateways. These are the Aviatrix gateways that can work as a hub gateway or transit gateway or a spoke gateway. And then we have this co-pilot, which is part of the platform to provide the multi-cloud operational visibility. Okay, so when you deploy the controller, it's just one controller managing single cloud, or if you have multiple clouds, you don't have to deploy this controller over and over again. The gateways are the special services devices or service node. Depending on the use case you enable, it will take that posture basically. So if you, are, if you want to deploy egress FQDN, it's the same gateway software, lightweight software, but now it will do additional functionality of sending traffic securely towards the internet, for example. This controller is a multilingual device. It can talk to our gateways. Not only that, but it can also talk to the cloud native APIs and cloud native constructs. The, the route table, the guard duty, and other functions that you find in your cloud native world. You also see that we also talk to these third party vendors, and this is just a subset of the large list that we have. So we understand their APIs, we know how they behave, and we can automate, orchestrate, and make it part of this single cohesive control and data plane. The Terraform is extremely important because a lot of customers, they don't even touch the UI, the Aviatrix controller UI. Everything is driven from Terraform. 
So they write the code and then that code become their infrastructure, right? So this is what they are using our platform for. And the best part is that this is not a SaaS or managed service. This is your network. So this platform is yours. So the way you build it, the way you want to define it, the way you want to manage this is 100% under your control. We are not sitting with someone else's workload or virtual machines. This is yours. You keep it under your account in your own cloud data center. So now let's take a look at the enterprise personas and some use cases. So let's say if you are new in GCP and if you want to enable different networking and security services in GCP, what we have seen that customer, first of all, are worried about providing the transit connectivity or providing the hub and spoke architecture in the cloud, okay? Because obviously you don't wanna create a snow, snowflakes or unicorns all over the place. You want to have this architecture approach. So this is where they start. And then they talk about providing the segmentation for the workload they deployed in GCP in one project or it could be in multiple projects, doesn't really matter. So that's the very important use case we see. Then the issue of security or making sure that the traffic going towards the internet is secure becomes very important. So this is where we have the egress FQDN to provide security controls based on fully qualified domain names, not based on the IP and port based echoes. Encryption I talked about is very important. How do I make sure when I'm connecting to the on-prem data center, the traffic is encrypted? What about the overlapping IP? I'm bringing more partners into cloud and I cannot control what IP they are bringing in or maybe it's the acquisition or merger use case. So this is what we see typically from the green field GCP customers. Now, if I talk about the multi-cloud aspects where let's say a customer is already present in AWS and now they are extending into GCP. So everything that you see, all the use cases you see on the left-hand side are also applicable here. But then their, their intensity increases. The problem statement or the pain point increases increase because of the, the nature of the multi-cloud. Now you're talking about segmentation across multiple clouds. Your blue subnet or VPC is here in GCP and then the blue is in AWS how I make sure that these guys talk to each other, but not to the green, for example. And then with the architecture that we have, we provide this common abstraction layer so that you don't have to learn all the underlying complexities and the services from this cloud provider. For you, it's just a single cohesive abstracted layer on top that you are dealing with. And that eventually increases the onboarding speed for your customers, for your business units, or for your partners. And this also provides the quick interconnectivity between the cloud. Because if you look at this line here between GCP and Azure, it is a multi-cloud link, but, it's, but it is not just an IPsec connectivity. There is a lot goes behind the scene, providing the high availability, making sure you have multiple path, making sure you're running ECMP, equal cost multi-path, making sure that if this link goes down, you have a way to connect to your other cloud provider through some other mechanism. So, so this is a lot that we actually help customers solve. And then the last piece is about the customers that are migrating into GCP. So there are some customers as a business, they decided that we will move 100% into GCP. And then there are customers who are saying that we will move bulk of our workload in GCP and we'll keep some in AWS Azure. So for those customers, this platform and the architecture approach is very relevant because now you can seamlessly move your workload into GCP without worrying about downtime or without worrying about learning and knowing the way things are done in GCP. And this, this is all done through a single Terraform provider. So the code that you write or have written in AWS is applicable in GCP. You don't have to make any changes there. Okay, so I showed you a lot of use cases and it looks very um, complex, but it is not actually. Because the reality is that when you want to deploy this solution, you don't have to boil this ocean altogether. You can start from a very simple use case. It could just be a hub and spoke architecture, transit routing use case, or it could just be egress FQDN use case. 
and then you can grow from there, right? So because everything just becomes plug and play after that, once you have this architecture in place. So don't worry about it. If you need help, talk to us, we'll help you resolve your pain points in GCP or multiple clouds. Okay, so how do I put this architecture together? How does it look like well, from the high level design perspective? So when we talk to our customer, this is the approach we follow. So first of all, you need to think from the architecture point of view. So you can see I have access, transit and app layer here. And then this access layer is providing connectivity back to on-prem with the, with the encryption and the visibility that you need. And then in the transit layer, I will deploy Aviatrix Transit gateway in the high available fashion. And then this will become my hub and then I will attach spokes to it, right? So this is how I would start for, for my customer. Uh, this will create a unified control plane with the distributed data plane, with all the, the automation, with all the visibility that you need. And this will become my repeatable design. So I'll just design it once and then I copy paste and repeat or rinse and repeat. Right, so if I have another business unit coming on board, not a problem. I will just deploy it for them. Then the second one, in another region, okay, no problem. I will deploy it for my customers or my clients. And that will give you this holistic picture where you're getting all the benefits of this platform. So you're getting the architecture, you're getting the cloud networking, you're getting all the BGP advanced knobs for proper traffic engineering, your overlapping, overlapping IP issues are resolved. You're providing the, the security that your customers or your clients are demanding. You're providing the segmentation. So for example, you have this green VPC here. The second one is there. Yeah, they can talk to each other, but the blue might not want to talk because this is fraud, this could be dev. Depending on the, the policy or the profile you define, we can achieve your desired outcome. And then the cloud access I talked about, doesn't really matter if you have contractors, partners, employees, if you have SD-WAN, legacy branches, they can all connect to this cloud network with this architecture approach. And the Terraform, I talked about the controller gives you the visibility, the automation. If you need something more advanced, then uh, you go with the co-pilot and I'll show you a demo of how it looks like. So that's all given as part of this architecture. But not only that, like I said in the beginning, the cloud native services, for example, in GCP, they have the concept of shared VPC, the global VPC, the serverless with cloud functions, GKE, Anthos, the list is very long. We do understand all those constructs and we provide you a solution with our cloud networking approach. Okay, and this is, this is the power of the architecture I was talking about. So in this slide, you notice I have GCP. In the next slide, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just change this logo and everything will remain the same. And that's the power I was talking about. So now in the multi-cloud scenario, if you're extending from GCP to AWS, you don't have to do any guessworks. Everything is already there for you. So now you get all the features right, with, but with multiple clouds in place. So you have the PGP coming in, you have multiple ways to reach to the other side. If one way good goes down, then you have another way to reach to the other side on all the other features that I listed here and talked about. And obviously this list is just a subset of what we, what we provide. If you want to know more details about what we can do, do with GCP or in a multiple cloud scenario, please talk to us or search us on our, on our website. All right, so now let's take a step back and talk about some customer case studies. So the personas that I told you about, let me translate them into the actual customer deployments that we have done. So the first one is for the new GCP customer. Okay, so this customer, is a leading provider of security and intelligent data mining. They provide software to their client. So for example, one of their customers is a call center. So they will be sending them the voice and video recordings. They will take the recording from, from this partner and then their software will do the analysis on, on that piece of software to give them some meaningful outcome based on the raw data that they receive. And they have a number of different partners uh, sending them different type of traffic. So their main pain point was that the onboarding of those partners was taking too long. 
because remember these partners can bring different type of workload they could have different type of routers or setups behind the scene. It could be AWS VPC that they are trying to connect to GCP, or it could be an on-prem branch, right? So we, we said, okay, this is the problem. Okay, we can solve this. And then what about providing the compliance across these multiple tenants? That was their main, another concern that, okay, we, I wanna make sure that this traffic is segregated because they are different clients. And when the problem, uh, comes in or there, there's a problem in the application, the troubleshooting was a very lengthy process, right? How, so customer will come to them saying, you know, I cannot ping from my on-prem side to your side or from my cloud VPC to your cloud VPC. So those were the real problems that this customer had. And the solution that we provided with them is with the hub and spoke architecture, as you can see here in the diagram. So with that, the automation is automated. With our site to cloud, we support number of IPsec uh, uh, options in the encryption and uh, authentication category. So it doesn't really matter if you have very old branch router or something, uh, we can connect there and then uh, bring them as part of your cloud network. If your partners are bringing the same IP addresses, we have patented advanced netting capabilities that can overcome those issues for you. So if you have a need, let's you know, talk to us. And then we also enable the egress FQDN filtering to make sure that the security posture is enhanced. And when the traffic is going towards the internet, it is secure based on the FQDN. And the last piece is about the users connecting into this network. So we have very strong policy-based, SAML-based VPN support in our platform. So you can onboard your employees or your contractor. We have multi-factor authentication, different options in order to make sure that when these contractors or employees are logging in, they have access to only their applications or resources and they're not going to some, somewhere else. All right, so the next one is, is a customer that we have. Um, it's basically providing the AI-based cybersecurity software for the internet and business users. Okay, so this is a B2B model that they follow. So you don't see their software running in front of you because they sell their software to their clients, likes of AT&T, Verizon, Xfinity, Vodafone, and those type of clients. And then these clients will install their software in their hardware devices or their software devices. And that's how your internet traffic or your broadband traffic is, is protected. So their main point, main point was that, okay, so I have these service providers and they can be in any cloud. So I need to support all these clouds. So I need a global standard network across all these clouds, right? Said number one. Number two, for, for some customers or service providers, I have very strict compliance requirements. So I need to make sure that it is highly secure, highly encrypted. That was another pain point. And obviously time to market their service or their application is very important because if there is a DDoS attack or something happened to their code or somewhere, they need to make sure they quickly develop this code and push it to their, their clients, their service providers, right? So yeah, so we solve this challenge, all these pain points for them with our global transit solution which is encrypted in nature. Encryption is just by default there. And this works across multiple clouds and also to your on-prem resources. We solve the problem of compliance with the multi-cloud network segmentations. So when you create these segments, they are applicable in one cloud and also can be extended to multiple clouds. And for developers to make sure that they quickly can log in to the cloud and push the code, we have a strong SAML based user VPN solution um, for to order to in order to solve these challenges. Okay. Okay, moving on. This is the third one. Now, this customer is our existing customer present heavily in AWS. This is the Fortune 500 customer. And um, they provide a number of different services because it's a group of companies basically. So they provide services in the aerospace defense, transportation, or to the service provider market. So their model is, the, is a kind of a SaaS model where their clients and then their partner, 
they come to their to their applications or to the VPCs and they consume services from from them, right? So now they have this challenge of migrating everything from AWS to GCP because as a business decision, they, they want to move everything into GCP. So since they already had our transit-based architecture, it was very simple and easy for them to achieve that because all they had done is just created a transit network in GCP and with just a single click, they enable this active mesh, highly available encrypted peering between these transits. And now they can move all the workload from AWS to GCP at their own pace without having to incur any downtime. And then they're also getting all the benefits, all the use cases in GCP. So for their developers and even their customers, they don't need to know what is running underneath. For them, it's just seamless. And this is the power, this is possible through the, the architecture that we have and the platform that we have. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you a co-pilot demo. And this demo is also available on this link on YouTube. So I'm going to switch to my recording here in a minute. Okay, so this is my controller, Aviatrix controller interface. What I have done, I have already created GCP transits. In my setup, I have two GCP transits. And then I have spokes already deployed. So uh, you can see here on the screen, the transit, and then the transits that I have. And then if I click on the spoke, you will see the spokes that I have attached to this. So this network is already built. Now, as you're building this network, the copilot is running and then it's building all the topology for you. So you can log into the copilot. You can see the dashboard. The dashboard will give you exactly what we have developed or designed. And it's the rundown of your entire cloud or multi-cloud inventory. It will also show you some important benchmarks and option if your gateway is down and whatnot, you can select the, the cloud of your choice and you can see the resources deployed for that particular cloud. And you, it's nicely shown on the map here. Not only that, we also give you kind of a breakdown of number of gateways deployed per region, the size of the gateway, so you can properly operate and manage your cloud environment. In the bottom, you'll see the traffic that is flowing in and out of this cloud network. So this is a nice way of looking your health of your network. Now the topology, as I mentioned, was built automatically. Uh, as you add things or delete things, this will automatically update. And you can see here, I have GCP two transits and the spokes are connected. And this is your view, okay? So you can change the layout, you can make it yours. Some people don't like to see this layout, so you can change it like I have done here. It will show you more information. It will also show you the instances attached to those spoke VPCs. And uh, not only that, this is also showing you the latency. So this is extremely important to know the latency between different components so you can troubleshoot the slowness. Okay, Flow IQ. Flow IQ is the place which will show you the data based on the various flows happening inside your cloud. So these are the donut looking uh, 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 options we have and then I call them different slices. You can see the color of those slices. And when you click on the slice, it will automatically create filter based on that slice, right? And then everything else will be redrawn based on the filter that you have. So now you are seeing everything from based on that filter. So you can see all the data, where they're going, their TCP flag, the countries and cities they're talking to. So that's nice. Now talk about the trends. Obviously we want to follow trends. We want to see the trend in our network so that we can proactively take actions if something is happening as a trend in your network. Maybe there is a spike every day or every week at 9 p.m. You wanna know that. That will show you the trend. And you can drill down those trends as well. The map view or geolocation view will give you a heat map for the traffic that is happening uh, in your cloud topology. If you have a large topology, it will show you a map, the world view, where you can see exactly the places where your traffic is going to or coming from. So maybe there's a place that you don't 
want to see or you think that it's a suspicious place. So you can quickly narrow down to that city and destination and see exactly what devices or IP addresses you are talking to. The next one is the flow. This is for the, the band, I call it. So there are different bands based on the top talkers. So obviously you wanna know who is the top talker in my network and who they're actually talking to. And is there a way for me to optimize this? Maybe they're sitting in two different regions and you want to bring them closer into one region, right? So that could be one way of solving it. So yeah, so this will give you a quick view into top talkers. Now, if you wanna really go deep down into the, the packet details, you can still do that. This uh, records will show you the raw NetFlow data. And then there, is, there are a lot of options and knobs that you can enable to see exactly how packets are coming in and out of your cloud or multi-cloud network. Performance is very important for me, obviously. I want, to, I want to know exactly how my resources are behaving in the cloud, their CPU, their spikes. The next is the cloud route. So cloud route, obviously, when you're troubleshooting something related to a ping connectivity or, or a normal connectivity, you want to know how the packet is being routed. Now, you can, we can show you the route, but not only that, when you click on the route, we will also show you the relevant topology. Right, so you can see those pieces are highlighted. So that will be there. And then also the flow IQ, okay? So you can click on the route and we will also show you the flow IQ for that particular route. So that will definitely reduce your time to resolution or time to troubleshoot a problem. So cloud route is, uh, is extremely powerful. A lot of customers, they love it. So now we can show you the routes from the gateway perspective from different cloud, but also from the VPC or VNet perspective. So all the local routes that you have deployed or we have deployed in those VPCs and VNet. In this example, I have this GCP route and you saw me clicking on it. And now I'm showing you the topology for that particular route. Okay, so if I expand, then I can actually see all the routes their next stop, their priority, their route, their status, and all the details that you need to troubleshoot a problem. The next is notification. So this is about creating the alerts. Obviously, I want to know proactively if something is bad happening in my network or if some resources are underutilized or overutilized. I want to know that. So I can quickly create these alerts that can send me an email or through web hooks. Okay, so App IQ is a very important, a popular uh, feature we have. So basically, if you're troubleshooting connectivity from VM1 to VM2, you select the source and destination, you click analysis, and this is what you get. So you get all the relevant information for that particular flow or for that particular path. The, the flow IQ, the route table, the security group, the gateways that are in the path, everything related to that. So you don't have to do any guesswork or worry about jumping here, jumping over there, finding the IP. No, you don't need to do that. We'll give you all this in one shot and you can also export it as a PDF to show it to your manager or, or your supervisor. All right, so that was the demo for the Copilot with GCP. Now I will switch back to my presentation. And next I have some popular GCP design choices. So like I said, this is a comprehensive platform that we have. There are a number of different options and design choices, but I will stick to the, the popular one. Okay, so the first one is with the shared VPC. So this is a concept in GCP where as an IT admin or as a network and security owner, you can create a host project and then you can create the subnets and the firewall rules that you can check out or extend to your developers. So those developers will be sitting in the service project and they will get this subnet from you as a network admin. Now, important thing to remember that a lot of people are confused that this is going to solve their transit networking for them. That's not true. This is not a network concept. This is mainly an admin concept 
where the central IT or central admin can create those subnets or network and can hand off to the developers so that they can deploy their applications and they don't have to worry about the, all the routing, you will, will take care of it, right? And also, this is not equivalent to the, the peering, native peering, okay? So don't confuse there. So we understand this concept. You can see in my slide here, I have created some subnets, which I'm sharing with the service VPC. And this is how the, the architecture looks like. So now we have this hub and spoke architecture deployed with AVX components. You can see this host project is there. And then I have extended or shared the subnet to a service project. So now this, this workload or this app is connected to this hub and spoke architecture and with the understanding of the shared network. So this, is, this makes um, life a lot easier for our GCP customers who are going to shared VPC. Obviously, if you don't have a shared VPC, you can still achieve the transit routing and all the functionalities without shared VPC. But if you have a need for this type of architecture, yes, definitely we support that. And you can see the deployment details here on this URL. The next is about serverless compute. So in AWS, they call it Lambda. In GCP, they call it cloud functions. So what happens that when you're writing these cloud functions, the cloud functions are just sitting there locally on your, on your serverless compute, right? So what we can do, we can bring this cloud function and make it part of your transit architecture. So here in this example, you can see I have this cloud function, my code written here, which I can connect using a VPC connector to my spoke VPC here. And then this is spoke VPC is connected to my hub or my transit gateway. Now your, your cloud function is not sitting in, in isolation, it's part of this architecture. And once it becomes part of this architecture, you get all the benefits of, of it, right? For example, inserting a service or a firewall or a checkpoint or Palo Alto or Fortinet into the mix, right? So we actually enhance the cloud function functionalities in the cloud. And not only that, if you are extending to other cloud, could be Azure, could be AWS, this is now extended to those clouds as well. So you can now see that your cloud function is talking to the in GCP and also in the other cloud. So we are making it a lot better uh, with the architecture that we have. Okay, a lot of customers I talk to, they are, they really like the GKE. They really like the Kubernetes and that's the workload that they have. So we have validated design, we have validated deployment where customers are using our solution to make sure that when they are deploying these, these clusters, the GKE clusters, they are part of their, their network. Because when you create this GKE cluster, they are basically local here in this VPC, but what about if they need to talk to some other clusters in another VPC? So that's how you can, you can connect them and provide this, uh, this connectivity, connectivity across GKE clusters. Now, if I take this idea and extend it a little further, now I see another use case adding to the to this GKE architecture. Now, what about if these clusters or the applications that you have deployed, they need to talk to the external external entities? It could be an API gateway, could be some other SaaS service, or could be connectivity to GitHub to download the new code or to some patching service. Now you need to provide the security for the traffic that is leaving from GKE and going towards internet. The one option is to create the security groups and to block the traffic or allow the traffic, but that is not scalable because oftentimes these services in the background, they keep changing their IP addresses and you don't wanna be in the business of creating those rules yourself without any policy. So that's why it's very important that you that you understand or utilize the egress FQDN functionality so that you can talk to these these providers or these services in a secure fashion. Okay, so what about extending this to the on-prem? So again, very easy and simple with 
the architecture, you have this transit VPC here, right? And then now you can use Google uh, interconnect or simple IPsec VPC, um, uh, IPsec tunnel or public internet to connect to the on-prem. In the on-prem side, this could be any flavor of data center. It could be any software defined or non-software defined data center that you have where you have created these clusters. Now they become part of your overall network with the security, with the encryption, with the, all the advanced traffic engineering, all the advanced nating capabilities that you need for this architecture. Okay. Okay, let's talk about the Aviatrix Transit for Google Anthos. So Istio is a, is a commonly deployed service mesh project, which is supported by Google. And the service mesh itself provides application level discovery, segmentation, registry, and discovery options. But the thing that you need to remember that traffic stays within a Kubernetes cluster, right? Which is typically your VPC or VNet. And the CNI plugin that you have, it will take care of that. But the reality is that you're not deploying your applications in silos, in one VPC or one VNet. Your applications are typically extended across multiple clusters. It could be in different cloud. So who's gonna provide the advanced networking and security service control for those type of workload? So this is exactly where Aviatrix platform comes in. So now this, this is T or service mesh can solve the layer seven issues, but for all the networking and security connectivity and the segmentation and the encryption, you can leverage Aviatrix hub and spoke transit based architecture with all the other features that I explained, right? So with this architecture, the Aviatrix platform enables Google Anthos to build secure and robust connectivity between GKE cluster, wherever they reside. It could be in just, just in GCP or could be extended to on-prem or if you have deployed it in, in AWS, for example, or Azure. So that's the, uh, challenge that we are solving. And with that, you can see in this example, I have some blue VPCs in the prior security domain. Then I have some green in the dev security domain. Now I can create a policy through Terraform or through API or through the controller UI, which will just block the traffic between prod and dev in just one single click. So that's how powerful it is. If you want to know more about this use case, you can go take a look at this community link where we have discussed this in more details. All right, with that, over to you, Rod. All right, thanks, that was awesome. Uh, I, I would give you the whole rest of the day off, Shazad, but we need you around <laughs> to do some other things. Thank you. Um, so uh, quick poll for everybody that's still here. Uh, please go ahead and uh, answer the poll questions. Uh, it gives us a lot of good feedback. And for all of these things that Shazad was talking about, if you have any questions going forward, um, you know, check out info or send us an email at info at aviatrix.com. You can also try any of this yourself by launching in a cloud uh, from the cloud marketplaces and our docs at aviatrix.com or docs.aviatrix.com will give you all of the step-by-step -step, uh, ways to, to do that on your own. And if you have any questions, you can always go to our uh, chat box at the bottom, uh, bottom right of our website and uh, we have solution architects that man that and can answer some technical questions. Uh, we also can set up uh, any kind of a, a design, a virtual design session with you to go through some of your company's issues and what, what you're trying to solve. And very popular out there today is our ACE training. So go to aviatrix.com slash ACE and check out that uh, self-paced class that you can actually get certifications on. So with that, I think we have a few minutes to maybe hit a couple of questions and then we'll come back to what's coming on with the upcoming Tech Talks. Um, let's see, Nicholas, you were manning the questions. Anything interesting come across? Yeah, there was, there was um, again, one question around the GCP shared VPC and um, what does it have to do with the GCP VPC peering? 
And um, I know people get confused sometimes because when you hear the word shared, you might think, okay, I mean, we we share it so it becomes available to another VPC. So is it like the peering? And so is, is really no. Um, the GCP VPC peering is about doing very basic connectivity between two VPCs, which by the way, is not really the approach we recommend you take as Shaza explains. The shared VPC is, is really about ownership, separation of ownership for a given VPC, where in the shared VPC, the network team is able to be in charge of the network elements of that VPC. And there are subnets from that VPC that you can give to the applications team so they can launch their workloads on those subnets. But at the same time, they don't have the authorizations to uh, do anything with the network infrastructure. So it's, it's more separation of roles for better isolation. All right, great. Um, there was also a question about getting a copy of the presentation. Uh, so you will all receive, because you registered an email that gives you a link to the replay of the presentation. So if you want to share that with colleagues or review what we talked about, you, you will always have access to that and there'll be a link, a link to that. Um, other, any other questions uh, that came across that were interesting you think others would be interested in? Nicholas. Um, yeah, there was a question when Shazad was showing the design for, um, I think it was for Entos, oh, sorry, for JKE, um, where the use case was, you know, your workloads in JKE clusters need to access external resources over the public internet that we secure um, using Aviatrix FQDN filtering. And so uh, somebody was asking, do you need to um, do you have to launch separate Evitrix gateways for that? Answer is you have the choice, but you don't, you don't have to. The first choice is yes, you can spin up separate Evitrix gateways to perform this egress FQDN filtering. Um, this is if you want to have a distributed model, or you could centralize them in the centralized set of Evitrix gateways. But irrespectively of the design that you choose, the gateways are, are built on single software. So it's not a separate type of gateway. It's always the same gateway that you launch using the controller. And then you simply enable or not enable various functionalities on the gateways. Fantastic. Thank you. OK, with that, I think we've reached the end of our time. I just want to highlight a couple of upcoming tech talks uh, on October 20th. Uh, we're going to be talking about bringing next generation firewalls into the cloud and simplifying centralized egress and ingress security. On October 27th, we won't actually have a tech talk because on the 29th, we're doing a customer flight plans webinar where we're going to be hosting national instruments or as they call themselves now, NI, uh, and ta them talking about how they're leveraging uh, Aviatrix for multi cloud. Uh, and, and why that became so critical for them. Then on November uh, 10th, we're gonna be hosting a very interesting one about serverless with, with Aviatrix. Uh, Nicholas will be presenting there, and, and this is a really interesting technology, how you can leverage Lambda and other serverless technologies from the cloud providers and connect them directly into the Aviatrix network infrastructure and be able to go multi-cloud or get to anything that's connected to even on-prem get to anything that's connected to the aviatrix transit network then on november 12th uh, we'll be doing a joint webinar with worldwide technologies talking about what some of their customers are doing in this in this space so with that thank you very much Sazad, for the presentation and everyone for attending and we'll see you on another upcoming Tech Talk Tuesday.